I mean, if you're already at court, you might as well try to behave. These criminals are just a bit loopy in my opinion. I'm your host Yusuf, welcome to Crime Time, and today we're covering the top 10 times convicts try to escape court. Make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Anyways, let's get out of here! Number 10, Leonid Grazer. Leonid was on trial for taking the life of someone and for that crime he blamed Satan for making him do it. That's just the beginning of the story and it's already kinda crazy. The staff and security of the Moscow courthouse were clearly attentive to the man and decided to lock him in a strengthened, tempered glass box. Gracer paced around the box with an evil smirk as if he was thinking, look at these idiots, I've got this. All of that confidence was sent to his legs, which he used to jump up and escape through the ceiling of the box. He made up one of the walls and threw a ceiling tile when a guard leapt up and started hitting Grazer with his baton. As the situation escalated, Grazer's pants found themselves at his ankles. With his newfound embarrassment, Leonid Grazer sat back in his box, defeated. Number 9, Tanner Jacobson and Cody Howard. These two were facing trial at the same point in time when the pair decided they needed to get out of there. We were sitting there on the benches together and He's like, he's like, I'm gonna run. They both spirited away, most likely assuming the guards would be so shocked that they wouldn't meet much resistance. That all changed when the judge himself hopped out of his seat, threw his black robe to the ground, and took off after them. The judge, R.W. Buzzard, vaulted down some stairs and managed to tackle one of them to the ground while the other guards caught up with and apprehended the other. Tanner and Cody seemed to both be baffled by their own moronic attempt. One of them later told the media this, I thought, what am I doing? What did I just do? I gotta go with it now, I can't stop right here. I'm screwed. I said, what am I doing? What did I just do? I gotta go with it now. There's nothing, I can't stop right here. There's nothing I could do now. I'm, I'm screwed. Yes you are, pal. Yes you are. The pair were given second degree escape thrown onto their list of charges. The two now face new charges of second degree escape. That's a felony. They were in that courtroom only on misdemeanors. Number eight, Gerald Hyde the second. This one comes from Washington State, same as the last one. This attempt is just as wacky too. Gerald Hyde the second is a convicted hard substance user, and the guard watching over him and his fellow convicts probably needed a new prescription on his glasses or something. A group of prisoners were in the room adjoining the courtroom where they were supposed to sit patiently and wait to be transported back into the prison van. The guard walked across the room, leaving the door to the courtroom open wide. Gerald saw an opportunity and took it, like every smart business person. He slipped through the door while walking backwards, an action no other prisoner reported back to the guard. Gerald stripped his inmate shirt off and kicked off his prison sandals, shuffling through the courthouse corridors and leaving through the front door. Nobody asked him any questions despite him looking exactly like what he was, an escaped convict. He was caught a few hours later at an associate's house. Number 7, Jessica Cato. Cato tried to flee through the ceiling of a courthouse while at a class on good decision making. Already on probation for larceny, she had been compelled to attend the class by court order. But while she was there, the staff found out she had warrants out on her for some petty offenses. Realizing they were about to arrest her, the woman first barricaded herself in a bathroom, and then tore down a ceiling tile to gain access to the scaffolding above. Dust rained down on onlookers below as the woman scuttled around and around the spot on the ceiling. Eventually, one of her legs burst through a tile, and guards had to use a stepladder to drag her out from her incredibly useless hiding place. Here's hoping the judge threw in a few more of those good decision-making classes when Cato was finally sentenced. Number 6, Car Chase Chaos. An unnamed man was running some errands, buying car parts and selling substances to people when he ran a stop sign and got pulled over. The officer goes to the driver's window and asks for license and insurance, which he does not have. The officer goes back to his car and runs his name through the system, which prompts the man to get nervous and make a break for it. The man is driving through traffic, making crazy turns and close calls with other vehicles. At many times, the police set up spike strips, which the man avoids. A couple of times, actually, police cruisers would bump his car and make him spin out, but he would recover and spin fully to keep going. The chase ending in a cop car ramming his vehicle into a fire hydrant, which stopped it very quickly. The man ended up being sentenced to 12 years. Number 5, Rayton Woodford. Woodford is sitting in court for a probation revocation hearing. He'd been sentenced to probation for substances and weapons charges, but violated the terms of his probation. A detective goes up on the witness stand and gives testimony that he knew Woodford was a convicted felon and that he found him with weapons. The judge then sentences him to five years in jail and wishes him good luck. Probation revoked in its entirety. Mr. Woodford, I'm gonna send you to serve five years. Good luck to you. Woodford then suddenly leapt out of his chair and ran towards the door when he was caught by the guards. 
The judge then states, The record will reflect that Mr. Woodford made an unsuccessful attempt to escape. Number 4. Ronard Neal Neal was in court facing previous theft and fleeing officers charges, but he was supposed to actually show up for court the day before and didn't show. After a bench warrant was issued for his arrest, the judge orders the deputies to take him into custody for failure to appear. Neil then manages to break free, springing into an adjoining courtroom and bursting out of the front doors to the room, shocking onlookers. Neil makes it to the staircase down to the first floor exit and hurries towards freedom when he is apprehended by police and deputies chasing close behind. He's returned to the courtroom later that day where he pleads guilty to his charges and for his escape attempt which caused damage to property and personnel. He got a total sentence of 10 years. Number 3. Force Company It's 9pm in a juvenile justice center in Nashville, Tennessee, where four teens have been left unsupervised while on a work detail. The teens are staying here as they await trial for their crimes, including armed robbery, auto theft, and execution. You can see one teen leading the pack and rushing up some stairs, followed closely by another boy wearing a yellow security vest. The boy runs down the hall but decidedly joins the other teens up the stairs. When they arrive at the ground floor, they all burst through the front entrance and no one is there to catch them. Eventually the four were caught and had their sentences extended. Later on, it was learned that the four boys might have had help from two employees on the inside, who could face charges now for their aid. Number 2. Rashad Hawkins Hawkins was given jail time for failing to pay child support, but before he could be taken into custody, Hawkins made a mad dash out of the courtroom. The man, filled with thoughts of escape, thinks about his options quickly and hops over a guardrail. Did I forget to mention the courtroom was on the second floor? Rashad slams onto the ground below, just in front of the reception desk. He gets up from the cold tiled floor and rushes for the exit. Everyone around the area was baffled. The deputies on the second floor look around and down at him, none of them chasing him. For 20 days after that, Hawkins was a wanted man on the run. The man was found when he trespassed onto some people's property and they reported him to the police. A new list of charges was added to the man's sentencing. Number 1. Israel Pointer Pointer is in court for a hearing after he failed to appear at court for charges including robbery with a firearm and possession of a firearm. The judge revokes his bond, but before Pointer can be taken into custody, he quickly makes a break for it. He manages to dodge the hands of one deputy, then another. Just down the hall are two deputies getting ready for their shift, where they quickly find the escapee who puts up a fight and shakes loose. He almost makes it to freedom when he is stopped by a district attorney, who unbuttons his jacket and grabs hold of his arm, taking him down with the help of other DAs nearby. He was sentenced to six months in jail for resisting arrest, and later he admitted guilty to his other charges, which landed him three years in prison. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment if you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time on Crime Time, baby. Woo!